Hi, I'm Pastor Steve. Welcome to the Midweek Encouragement Word. Well, as the new year began, many of you are doing some exercise to stay in fit. And how can you get excited about fitness when you're not very excited about fitness? And I think the same thing can be true sometimes when we talk about spiritual exercises. How can we get excited about spiritual exercises like giving <laughs> when we may not be really excited about it. How can we make giving, especially when we're doing online giving and maybe setting it up as a reoccurring or an automatic thing that just happens, comes out of our bank account. How do we make those a spiritual exercise to do those rather than just doing them because, well, we're just doing them. I think in order to make it a spiritual exercise, there's some things that you and I need to believe. One is that you and I believe that God has called us to give faithfully and to give sacrificially. You know, Jesus was hanging out with his disciples one day. They were at the temple court, people watching. And maybe you've done that before where you're just sitting back and, and watching people go by. And Jesus was seeing people come in and out of the temple. People were dropping in their offerings into the treasury. But then Jesus got astounded and amazed. And he called his disciples over, over something that he was watching. And it says in Mark chapter 12 that a poor widow came and dropped in two tiny coins worth very little. Summoning his disciples, he said to them, I assure you, the poor widow has put in more than all those giving to the temple treasury. For they all gave out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. Now, this widow gave what seemed like very little, but she gave all that she had. And I believe she did that because she wanted to be faithful to a God who was faithful to her. And she believed that God was calling her to give faithfully and sacrificially. See, God had called his people from the Old Testament to be generous givers, to be faithful in their giving, so that it would be a reminder to them that their stuff is not that important. It's not as important as God and what God wants to do through his people. God really did care for them, and God really does care for you. He cared for that widow. And the thing is, God doesn't want us to be poor. That's not the point. In fact, it's quite the opposite. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says that you and I will be blessed in every way for our generosity. For our generosity, God is going to bless us both tangibly, things here on earth that we need, as well as spiritual fulfillment. In every way, we're going to be blessed because of our generosity. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, God's saying, test me, test me in this area and see if it's not true that I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room to store it. How God really does care for you. He really wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have stuff. It's not about not having stuff or having stuff. He just wants to make sure that you're not putting your security, your trust, your safety, your pleasure in the stuff, in the money, rather than in Him, the one who gives it to you. He doesn't need your stuff. He owns everything. He created the entire universe. Why does He need what you have? He gave it to you anyways, but He wants your heart. He wants your relationship, and He's calling you to give faithfully and sacrificially so that you can remember that it's not about the stuff, that it's about God. And I think that you and I also need to believe that what we give really is making a difference for the mission. The woman who gave the two little coins, she probably could have thought, you know, it really doesn't make a difference and I need it more than they do. And so what does it matter whether I give my two little coins or very little? I need it to live off of. But she knew that if she gave or if she didn't give, there could be things that could happen and maybe there's things that couldn't happen. As you give to your church or to charity or organization of your church, you know that when you give, they're able to do things that maybe they couldn't do, probably couldn't do, definitely couldn't do without what you give. If you don't give, then the church may not be able to support another missionary. Or when you do give, the church would be able to take on another missionary. And it's not about the amount. God can take what little people give and turn it into something amazing. Remember, we talked about how God can create things and he can take something, even out of nothing, and make something amazing. So you and I believe that what we give really does make a difference for the mission. And you and I also believe that God will take care of those who are faithful to him. This idea, again, that we cannot 
outgive God. You know, there's a story in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 4 where there was this widow. Her husband had died. She had two children, and she really wasn't able to pay for her bills. And the debt collectors came and said, well, we're going to end up taking your children to be slaves in order to pay for this debt because you've got nothing else. And so she called out to the prophet Elisha. Elisha came and said, well, what do you have in your house? You need to sell something. What do you have? She said, I got nothing but a jar of oil. Elisha said, okay, go and get empty jars, empty containers from everybody that you know, anyone that you can find and bring them here. And they gathered all that they could. They brought them in there and they took the jar of oil and they poured it into an empty container, into an empty jar. And that filled up and they set that aside. They kept pouring this jar of oil into more and more empty containers, into more and more jars. And they were filling them up and filling them up. And then suddenly she says, bring me more containers, bring me more jars. And they said, that's it. <laughs> you filled them all up that we brought. It's amazing. She was able to take those jars, those containers of oil and sell them in order to pay for the debt that she had incurred. God knows your need and God wants to supply your need just at the right time, just what you need, just when you need it. You and I need to believe that God will take care of us as we are faithfully and sacrificially giving towards his mission. We believe that what we do makes a difference in the mission. And you and I also need to be excited about the mission, the goal, the need. See, the church it certainly is a place where we can help others and a place where you can give so that other people can be helped. But it's also, and maybe its primary mission, is to educate about God and to have spiritual care for its people within the church and those outside of the church. Helping people understand who God is, how amazing God is, what God calls us to do. And when you give, you're able to make it happen, not only learning things yourself, but also helping your family learn, your community learn about who God is, the mission of the organization. Do you understand what your church is, your charity of choice, your organizations, what their mission is, and supporting that mission? I also encourage you to get involved in your church's mission. The more that you're involved, the more that you understand what its mission is, the more you actually get to see directly what is happening, how that mission is actually being done. You get to see the stories and hear the stories of the difference happening. And that's where it can get even more exciting to know that when we give, when we give faithfully and sacrificially, and when we believe that it's making a difference, we can actually see how it's making a difference. So be involved and hear those stories. If you're not able to be involved, I'd say ask the leadership of that church, of that charity, of that organization for those stories. Hey, what are some of the things that's been happening that you can share of what God is doing with the finances for the church, for the charity, for the organization? And hopefully they'll be able to share with you some of those stories of how your giving is making a difference. And I would ask the leadership those questions, ask for those stories, ask where is the money going so that you can be more excited, more excited about exercise, the spiritual exercise of giving. Well, I'm Pastor Steve. Thanks for this midweek encouragement word. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.